Okay, we've got another topic on how to talk, engage, and question your doctor. And this is related to a couple of weekly emails where you talked about how to find a good doctor and questions to ask of your doctor. And another weekly email that talked about colorectal cancer and screening, in particular colonoscopies. And there are a number of questions that were considered for a GI doc. We got a lot of questions around how do I ask my doctor these types of questions without offending him or her? And essentially, really, how do I approach my doctor with this information? I think it really comes down to relationships. And I think physicians are in a tough spot these days, especially those that are kind of in a culture of managed care where you know they're really held to a standard that I think is not fair, which is you've got to see patients probably to the tune of six an hour and if you're not doing that, you're sort of not doing your job. Now imagine that if you only had 10 minutes with a patient and they were coming in for whatever they were coming in for, and then all of a sudden they wanted to ask you questions about a topic without you even knowing what the topic is in advance. It's asking a lot. And the first thing I would say is you got to know your audience a little bit. What type of a rapport do you have with your doctor? And is there a way that you can kind of preview the information that you want to talk about with them prior to the appointment. Now, again, I'm sure that doctors are not at home sitting there asking, Hey, how can I come up with extra work to do when I'm home? Like reading patients emails and such, but I still think at least you have a chance. Let's say you forwarded them an email beforehand and said, Hey, you know, I was reading this email and given my family history for colon cancer, rather, I know I'm only 44, but and I realize it might not be covered by my insurance, but could I make an appointment with you to talk about this? That might be an easier way to go than to just show up for your flu shot or something like that and sort of throw this on them. Because it gives them a bit of a chance to sort of reflect on it, read upon it, have their point of view, et cetera. I was going to say, I think about my interactions with doctors I've had in the past, and I realize that it's different. So I want to be careful I don't extrapolate from that because when you're a doctor and you're talking to your doctor, it's a different relationship than a patient talking to a doctor. I'd flip this and say, you got to remember you're still the consumer here. And I think we need to sort of take a little bit of the veil of medicine's holiness away and empower patients a little bit. So if you, Bob, walk into your doctor and let's say you do this in this way that I've described, which is you don't just sort of surprise them by this, but you sort of put this out there and yet they're still totally and utterly dismissive of what you want to do. Well, then you have a right to go get another doctor. I mean, you got to remember medicine is not that special. There's nothing special about the fact that we spent four years going to a certain type of school. There's good doctors and there's bad doctors. There's good lawyers and there's bad lawyers. There's good engineers. There's bad engineers. And medicine, remember, we've talked about this, comes down to these three A's, which is availability, affability, and ability. You might not get all three of those in one person at a 10 out of 10, but you better get some fraction of those to a level that is your satisfaction. Some people may decide that affability means nothing. That's fine. But it's whatever your standard is. And I've certainly suggested to people that if they're not getting an answer that they're comfortable with from their doctor, they should go find another doctor. And yeah, that's a bit painful. But we're talking about your health here, so it's probably worth that investment. Absolutely. That just sounds like such a challenge that if it is seeing six patients in an hour or the average doctor is going to give you maybe 10 or 20 minutes or something like that. I suspect that if they had more time with their patients, I know you have time with patients and it's probably, I think I've heard you say that you're delighted when a patient comes and they have a lot of questions for you. Other doctors probably without the time constraints may have a similar opinion. I just think it's probably really difficult. Like you said, that you're giving them a laundry list of things to do and they've only got 10 to 20 minutes with you being proactive, maybe emailing them up front and saying like, look, when I show up, I'm going to have a few questions, et cetera. I think that's really helpful. I think that totally makes sense. Thank you for listening to today's sneak peek AMA episode of The Drive. If you're interested in hearing the complete version of this AMA, you'll want to become a member. We created the membership program to bring you more in-depth, exclusive content without relying on paid ads. Membership benefits are many, and beyond the complete episodes of the AMA each month, they include the following ridiculously comprehensive podcast show notes that detail every topic, paper, person, and thing we discuss on each episode of The Drive, access to our private podcast feed, 
The Qualies, which were a super short podcast, typically less than five minutes, released every Tuesday through Friday, which highlight the best questions, topics, and tactics discussed on previous episodes of The Drive. This is particularly important for those of you who haven't heard all of the back episodes. It becomes a great way to go back and filter and decide which ones you want to listen to in detail. Really steep discount codes for products I use and believe in, but for which I don't get paid to endorse and benefits that we continue to add over time. If you want to learn more and access these member-only benefits, head over to peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe. Lastly, if you're already a member, but you're hearing this, it means you haven't downloaded our member-only podcast feed where you can get the full access to the AMA and you don't have to listen to this. You can download that at peteratiamd.com forward slash members. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all with the ID Peter Atia MD. You can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast player you listen on. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. Mm-hmm.